thank you, Christian, for joining me and having this discussion. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to some dads and um, you are a dad that has continued to be active both within Ohana Oasis and doing other things in honor of your son. And so I'm really excited to hear what you have to say and share with everybody. So uh, first thing I wanna do and always do is wanna acknowledge who brought you here and if you could share a little bit about Liam and five words to describe him and then we'll go from there. Uh, five words to describe Liam, um, uh, empathetic, uh, bright, uh, funny, loving, and uh, charismatic. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he just, uh, uh, I mean, I only, I only, I, I remember him at four from the time he was born until four. So, uh, but in that short span, I would say uh, he was just full of life. Uh, he loved to, uh, he, he was very active. Uh, he loved his older sister, um, was always in her shadow, uh, was always by my side. So he was kind of my sidekick. Um, yeah, he was just very active, loved to climb trees, hop the neighbor's fence. Uh, sometimes he would climb the tree naked. Sometimes he wouldn't. Um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, he just, he just had this uh, aura about him that uh, just, it was gravitating like you wanted to be around him you uh loved being around him and he loved being around you and so yeah that's i mean i i could talk forever <laughs> but um, so he, he was four when he passed away and how long ago was yeah. that uh it was seven years ago it'll be eight this november so it was 2013 when he uh when he passed away all right and then you came to our third retreat and that was in Gosh, was that in 2016? 16, yeah. Yep. So um, it'll be interesting to get your perspective also, you know, being almost eight years out. And then also it's been quite a while since you came to the retreat. And so what things have stuck with you over the years. So how'd you first find out about Ohana Oasis? I, I remember getting the call too. Was, I was at work leaving. And uh, I'm I believe it's you that called me and I was, I was shocked. I was like, Oh my gosh, we're, we're going to Kauai. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, it was, it was pretty cool. It was, it was, it was cool to get that call because I, I really didn't know. Like I, I, I think she had mentioned it. Carly had mentioned it. Hey, I'm filling this out. And then that was, that was pretty much it. So, so to get your call was, was huge. <laughs> Do you have a favorite memory or activity from your week um, over here? In your time at Ohana Oasis? Um, there were several. I mean, the entire week was memorable, but I, if, if I had to put a favorite, um, I, I would say it was the first, it was that first excursion we went on. It was the gardens um, oh, where we, 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 we took those leaves and we, we wrote our child's name on the leaf and it was like a little message. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea what was going to happen with that. You just said to save them. So we did. And then I think those, I think the last event we did, we paddled out into was it Hanley Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was surreal for me because I think at that point, combining those two events at that point, uh, I was able to let go of a lot of, uh, I guess, feelings I had built up inside of me from Liam's death. Um, it was, it was sort of, I mean, it was just, it was, it was, it was an amazing experience because I, 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 I truly found myself in this sea of grief that I, I was living. And I think those two events uh, kind of roll into one because, you know, we, we, we let the, the leaves go in Holly Bay. And I remember, jumping in and crying i was just sobbing in the ocean so it was like <laughs> so like i i i think i think at that point i i felt like like i could move on into the next chapter of you know this this tangled ball of emotions we call grief and so thank you for that because that was that has stuck with me probably more so than anything any one like long lasting impact that you've seen over your journey through grief? I honestly, I think 
I had kind of just bottled everything up until Ohana Oasis. And that's where I was able to um, just speak freely. Um, you know, before talking to a therapist or other group sessions is kind of just, it's kind of mundane. It was, you know, the cliche thing of, oh, you know, let's, and it was very repetitive, but coming to Ohana Oasis, that was just, that was a keystone for me. That was uh, a chance for me to feel like I was in a safe space uh, to express how I felt, like how, how this grief just tears me up inside and it's okay as a man to cry, right? Um, I think for the for the first time uh, in Hawaii, being able to uh, yeah just just be me and not have you know there there was no judgments, there was no right or wrong answers, there was no playbook. It was just me being able to express how I felt and and expressing it to you know three other men who were in the same position as me. Um, so I, honestly, I, I think that week with you in, in Hawaii was just, um, I, I, I'd never experienced anything like that before. So, wow. I think, I think to, to answer your question, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, that, I, that's sort of a, a lifelong or, or a lesson that impacted me long-term. That, and that just makes my heart warm to hear that. Um, two things that I want to touch on from what you shared. You said that you'd been in other groups that you didn't feel that way. So what was different? And I'm asking this actually for me to really understand what was different between the other groups that you were with and what we do here that you had a completely different reaction and response to it. Um, honestly, uh, I mean, first and foremost, I think you, uh, made that possible. Uh, whereas in, you know, other group settings, it felt rushed. It was, it was always feeling a rushed or like I had to keep repeating my story over and over. And with you, the, the way you set it up, it's, it's kind of like this coffee table round talk. And we're, and you you just kind of let us do our thing and um, to me that that was amazing like there there was no script it wasn't you know you, you weren't following a playbook you know you weren't trying to be a therapist you weren't trying to be a counselor you weren't you know if, if we wanted to talk spirituality we could if we didn't we didn't have to or you know so I I, I think I think you set the tone for that um, which which separates Ohana Oasis from anything else that I've, I've come in contact with. For people that don't necessarily get blessed with the experience of being able to be with a group of other dads, how, as a dad, do you negotiate grief and getting through it and um, being able to actually embrace it? Um, at first, it was, uh, I, I, I grieved alone. Like, there, there are no men's groups that I know of. Um, so... Uh, uh, and as a father, you know, you, you still have two other kids, you have a wife to take care of. So you're expected to put on a happy face, return to work, return to what the world looks at as a normal way of life. But there's nothing normal about it when you're driving, driving to work and you're, you, you just start to cry for no reason. <laughs> or you have to get up from your desk and go into the bathroom and, and cry in a stall because, you know, we're, 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 we're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be the ones that are lifting up our wives and our children and, and helping them along. So, um, uh, I, I think, yeah, it's just, there's no, there's really no support for, for men when it comes to grief, other than if they're taking a, a group counseling session with their wife or their kids, but yeah, there's really nothing. So after leaving Ohana Oasis, did you find a way to create support for yourself moving forward? Or is that still a struggle? Um, no, I, I, I did. I, you know, uh, again, talking with the three other fathers, the three other men in the group, um, kind of learning from them. Uh, Mark was a huge 
asset with, with, with that. Um, and, you know, still keeping in contact with them or even after Ohana Oasis uh, ha has been impactful for me. You know, we, we can kind of bounce things off each other, send emails or texts like, hey, how are you doing? Um, but I, I think the one thing that I did take from Ohana from, from that week is uh, allowing myself to be open. Um, allowing myself to share how I'm feeling with a friend who may not understand what it is to lose a child. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that has helped me to sort of accept this obstacle that's been placed before me, not forget about it, not completely jump over it, but kind of move around it. It's still there, but, um, but ex ex accepting that, okay, th this happened to me. I lost my son. Um, but there are, there are, there are ways to work around that. And uh, that's the one thing I took away from that week with, with you. And do you feel like as you have been more open with people now that necessarily haven't been through the same experience that it's been beneficial to be vulnerable or is it still really scary to do that? Um, at, fir at, at first, it, it's, it's a little scary at first, but the more you do it, the more you're just like, this, this is a part of my life. This will be with me until I die, right? Like it's mm -hmm. who I am. So there, there's no point in trying to hide it. There's no point in trying to dance around it. Uh, you know, people you come in contact with, if they ask how many kids you have, I would just say three. I have three kids and, uh, you know, one, one is passed on. Or I just leave it at, hey, I have three kids. And if they keep going, like, well, tell me about them, then I'll, you know, I'll kind of bring that up. And then it, it like I have let that go. It's not on me to explain anything, but if they want to know more, they can ask me. So, um, yeah, I think I think being open for me at least has, has been huge. Awesome. That's a, it's a hard thing to do. Um, what's been the most surprising thing to you in losing Liam and moving forward in life? Um. I think the the hardest thing is uh, not knowing what what he would look like at eleven years old, or you know, what what are, how would he sound? Like, what would he be interested in? Um, I think that has been hard. Um, you know, it, it'll creep up. You know, there's there's only so many pictures I can go through because they, they stopped after he passed away. And so um, I think that's been a struggle. And what do you do about that? Or do you just sit with it? Uh, I, again, like I would say before coming to Hawaii, I, I probably would have wrestled with it, struggled with it, and it would have beat me up. Um, now I, I, from being open, I, I just embrace it. I, I let it hit me. I let that grief hit me. <laughs> and, and, you know, now it's like, it, it could be a minute or maybe five minutes and then I'm good. I'm good to go. And, and, uh, um, but it, it, it happens all the time. Like there'll always be something that reminds me of him. Uh, you know, it could be anything. And so you, you just have to prepare yourself. And I don't know, I, I just found tools that, that helped me. And one of those is just accepting it and not, not trying to fight the grief yeah. when it hits. Yeah, that's a big thing. It's scary to do it, but once you do it, you realize you get through it right. better and quicker than if you had avoided it. At least that's what I've yeah. discovered. Yeah, yeah, that's you're right, you're right. <laughs> uh, how about the biggest blessing? Because this is, it's tragic and horrible, but mm -hmm. there are also blessings that come out of it. So what's the biggest one that you've had? Oh, biggest blessing. Um, I would say that the biggest blessing coming out of this is realizing that uh, that that again, life is short. We're not promised tomorrow, and so just just be kind, be empathetic to people you meet, uh, mm. your own family, your own friends, uh, you know, spouse or girlfriend or whatever it, it, the case may be. Just being kind. I, I feel like. 
I feel like those of us who have experienced this understand that, okay, this is probably the hardest thing that I will ever have to go through. And if I can make it through that, then I can pretty much do anything. And one of those things is just being kind. And I, I feel like as bereaved parents, we have the ability to show empathy on a much higher level than somebody who hasn't. Yeah. Um, because, because we know that love that was there, it was taken and it'll never come back. So you know, that, at least that's what I've learned. Or for me, that's what I've taken away from this. Being able to uh, go about life with, with a different attitude, I guess. Uh, a, a, a different view on life, I guess, is, is how I would put it. Um, don't take, you know, and I, I don't take things as, as seriously as I used to. <laughs> perspective. Um, yeah. Perspective. Yeah, there you go. It really puts things in perspective for you. So how do you continue to honor Liam, um, both in like the anniversaries and holidays, but then also just in everyday life? Uh, you know, holidays, uh, we, we have a stocking for him, uh, over Christmas. Um, you know, we, at Thanksgiving, we, we try to honor him just by talking about him. Um, and I, I think talking about him with family and friends also, uh, helps keep his memory alive. Um, on his birthday, we, we, you know, we, we have a little party for him at his, favorite restaurant and um, let balloons go um, and then uh, you know it, I don't know just uh, buying coffee for the person behind me <laughs> in the Starbucks line uh, is, is one way that I, I try to honor him I, I, I feel like he would I feel like he would want that um, I, I, I feel like he would want us to be happy I don't think he would like to see us being sad. Um, so at least, you know, that that's who he was. He was, he was happy. So. Now you had um, other kids that actually were around when Liam was around. Mm -hmm. How, how do you negotiate or I guess work through like helping them to honor him? Uh, well, Kennedy was old enough to remember. She, she still has memories of him and, um, one, one thing I like to do with her is, you know, we'll just, we'll, we'll casually go talk about him, whether it's on a drive or a walk or, or, and, uh, I, I felt like it was good for her to talk as well, you know, to kind of mm -hmm. talk about some memories that she, she has of him and, and how she's feeling. And, uh, Presley was just an infant, so she doesn't really, I mean, she, she doesn't remember him at all. Um, but I try to do the same thing with her as well, just keep talking about him um in fact the other day she, she she just she brought up what was Liam's favorite color mm. and I had to stop and think about it because I'm like I, I it was blue but it took me a long time to <laughs> yeah I had to I had to I had to remember it was just kind of a struggle to pull that memory up and I was like oh my gosh I guess I should talk more about or I should remember uh his favorite color <laughs> So. Well, I was going to ask you, how'd you feel about that when you realize, like, oh, it's not top of mind anymore? Uh, well, honest, uh, it, it hit me. It was a surprise. I, and well, in a way, I was, I was a little bit sad because I had let that slip. And, um, you know, it's, it, again, it goes back to the, you know, I, I, I have, I've, almost forgotten a lot of the things that he liked um, because either I, I'm not talking about it enough or I just, I, I just don't remember, but um, it, it kind of made me feel. And so, um, and it made me rethink how I, uh, how I want to remember him um, um, simply because I had forgotten <laughs> his favorite color. Yeah made me a little sad. Is, there, is, is it, so I totally get that and have gone through that. And then on the flip side, is there also a blessing to it that the grief is not so all encompassing that you are in a different place in your life that 
you don't have to be rehearsing and keeping holding tight to those things quite so much. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Like I, I didn't, I didn't really look at it like that. That's, that's actually really good because I, although I was sad, I, it didn't completely keep me down. It didn't keep me, it, it didn't beat me up so much that I couldn't function. Yeah. Because I, I've been able to manage my grief that, uh, I guess that's that's a positive look on it that um, I'm 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 in a better place. What do you wish someone had told you at the beginning of your journey through grief? Oh. <laughs> um, don't don't sweep your grief under the rug. Um, I, I I wish somebody would have said, "Hey, this is going to be the hardest thing you'll ever experience. Uh, accept it." And, but, you know, I mean, I always got the pat answers, right? Like, oh, he's in a better place or, you know, God needed him on the other side. And I'm like, well, that doesn't <laughs> help, right? <laughs> but, right. <laughs> and, and, and for anybody who, who hasn't lost a child, like, no, those are the things not to say to, to, to a grieving parent. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I wish somebody would have just said, hey, accept this, cry when you have to. Um, even if it's a messy cry, uh, but don't sweep anything under the rug. Don't withhold how you're feeling. Talk to someone right away. I would, if, if I, if I would have somebody that said, get into a grief counselor right away, that probably would have helped me out immensely. So did you go to grief counseling later on? Uh, I, about a year after he passed away, I, I went, uh, I, I went through five or six and they just they weren't any good so I I, I didn't I, I, I didn't go to any more until you know I came to Hawaii so <laughs> and I and honestly like like a week with you was much <laughs> was like a hundred times better than a certified grief counselor I don't, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> well it's very humbling to hear and um I think that that's interesting, though, that you still say you would tell somebody to go to a grief counselor, even though it didn't work for you. So what is it about that that, that you feel like is so important? Um, I, well, I, I think one of the reasons why it didn't work for me is because I wasn't open to it. Uh, I, 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 was, I, I was so angry. Dude, what is it? in the recommending grief counseling that you're hoping somebody's going to gain? I, I would hope somebody would gain just uh, the, the ability to open up. Um, I, 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 I was closed off. So I, I guess if, if somebody would tell me to, to don't sweep your, your grief under the rug, but also be very open and not close off to, to just talking to someone. I think, I think finding a, a good group like Ohana Oasis, or if there's one local that, that will allow someone to just be open, I think that that'll be a good start. The advice that you would give to a grieving parent? Forgive people for they know not what they say. <laughs> Pe people, mm, are gonna say people are going to say some of the most off the cuff remarks and you're just like, like just simply forgive individuals because most people don't know what to say. Child loss is a an icky subject. It's, it's depressing. It's, it's it's a downer. So uh, you you kind of have to build a thick skin um, when when you join the club and let those things roll off your back because people will say. Some of the shittiest things, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, and it's it is again. It's just because they're they're just as uncomfortable talking about it as you are. So, what does good support look like? And maybe start off with a couple things of what not good support looks like. What are some of those things that you're just like, please don't say that. Just give me a hug or a pat on the back instead. Yeah, I, I think I think good support would be for, for someone who know somebody who's lost a child I think just not saying anything at all like like you said giving them a hug or just being there to listen because that's all I think we want is somebody just to listen to us 
because there 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 is no way to fix it. Um, you know, you you can't bring our child back. So simply just listen. And then on the flip side, the thing not to say would be like like I, like I said, all the pat answers of oh well, he's in a better place or um you know, God needed an angel or, you know, I, <laughs> those are things that just, uh, or, or, or someone who, who wants to try to fix it in the moment. And what does that listening look like, especially talking about being a dad? How, how can the men show up for other men? Um, I, I, I think, and I, I'm going to use, the story of Mark and I building a um, turtle, a, a turtle out of sand on the beach. Like, like that's, that's one way to just open the door, right? Like, Oh, let's, let's just kind of build this sand turtle and, um, you know, talk about what we like. And uh, a, a, as a man, it's, it's, it's really hard to just be open about your feelings and your, sensitivity but but you're also on the inside screaming for that like that that's what you want to do um so f for other men i i think it's just creating a an, an environment that that will allow you to sort of open that door and welcome another guy into that that space and whether it's over a beer or watching a baseball you know whatever the case may be i mean it, or maybe like going to Broadway musicals, I don't know. <laughs> and and I, and again, it goes back to you creating that environment for us, um, which I think is very important to start off with. And um, you kind of set the tone and you kind of just let us do our thing. And it was good because we we could just talk. And then, you know, we could focus on something else or we could go back to talking about our kids or, or you know, it was pretty much anything. and um so yeah you know and men just need men men need a friend too to talk to we have feelings we we do cry we we are emotional creatures as well and um and i i think as a society we're we're, we're, we're being better at allowing men to open up um but it's it's hard. It's hard. There's, there's not, not very many men's groups out there. <laughs> yeah. But just coming alongside each other and doing something and then yeah. creating that bond as you're doing it. Yeah. Um, what's one thing that you'd like to share with people that have not lost a child that you just wish they could hear and understand? Patience. Like, uh, just be patient, I guess, um, um, with, with, with someone who has and and I say patience because uh, if if you get into a relationship with somebody who who has lost a child, uh, patience and understanding is huge. Um, because there, you're going to have those days where this person is is going to be you know crying on the bathroom floor for no reason. Um, so I would say patience, whether it's whether it's you're in a relationship with somebody or a family friend. Uh, um, and then I, I, again, I wish people would just, just listen, right? Like just, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, don't try to offer me any sort of help because it doesn't matter. Um, I, I feel like, I feel like listening is a huge thing and, and patience. I mean, I, I think if there's people that are that are going to listen to this and watch this, if they know somebody who, or if they know a couple or an individual who is going through child loss, I would say get them in contact with you uh, as soon as possible. Um, because if, if you're trying to fight this alone, um, it, it's hard and it's a lonely battle and nobody wants to do it. I mean, I would feel confident <laughs> spreading Ohana Oasis message to other people, and 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 I have. So it's like, um, uh, yeah, I, I would, I would definitely try to get as many people into CU 
or, you know, get them to Kauai as quick as I could. <laughs> now, you know, actually COVID has been kind of a blessing for Ohana Oasis because for retreats, we have like 12 years worth of parents on our waiting list to come to a retreat oh, okay, because cool. of the wait list. And for every parent that we serve, we get three or four more parents applying once they get done with the retreat. And so we've been trying to figure out how do we keep up and how do we serve people? And so that's part of like what doing these videos and we now have a virtual mm -hmm. retreat that we do and a virtual course, like how can we serve all of the people that want right. to be served when we don't have, I would love to be able to serve everybody with a retreat, but we right. don't have the funding for it. I think uh, helping out Ohana Oasis would be beneficial to me. I, I felt like nonprofit work really helps with the grief, doing something good for other people who were sort of in that same boat um uh -huh. really helped with, with 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 grief in fact i would i would tell someone to maybe join a nonprofit that was similar to what their their child passed away from whether it was cancer or SIDS or whatever like i would probably tell them to like integrate yourself with other people who have experienced this or or helping people that are experiencing it for me, it was it was huge as an eye opener to you know, to, well, one to realize that I was not the only one going through this, right? Um, and two that there are happy outcomes to this. Um, whether my story is is not a happy outcome, other people can have that ha happy outcome, right? Yeah, I think that's a that's a a good fight. Well, thank you. Totally thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're, you're welcome.